Hey guys, back again, and today I'm presenting you um, the Fanga Critias variant of Lair of Darkness once again. I found some new spicy tech cards and along with the new Wee Witch's Apprentice as you see here. Unfortunately, all I have is one copy of it. I'm actually waiting for three more to come in the mail. But I decided to fill in um, some slots in my extra deck just until I get the rest in. Because I was going to be running it at two and I only have one, of course. And I'm kind of against proxying cards, so sorry about that. Well, anyway... Let's get to it and I'll show you like all the new uh, cards I decided to add in to make the deck run a little bit more smoother and make it more consistent. So starting off, you're running your big boss, uh, Darkest Diabolus, Lord of the Lair. Really amazing card because uh, he's real easy to summon out. Whenever you tribute a dark monster that you control, uh, you can special summon this card from your hand or your graveyard, uh, whichever one. And also uh, once per turn you can tribute one dark monster. Your opponent places one card from their hand, either on top or the bottom of their deck. So it's really good. And it's, but overall, it's actually better just to use that, maybe like at the start of the duel, you know, like just to like hinder their draw phase or something. But overall, it's like not really something you use too often. But the fact that he's a 3k beat stick, he can't be targeted or attributed by your opponent. So he cannot be kaijued. So Darkest Diabolus is definitely one of the best boss monsters, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, we got. Triple Lilith, a must at three, because um, this card is normal summon. Its original attack becomes a thousand, which isn't too bad, honestly, Because, but her ability is what counts. Um, you can tribute one dark monster, and just note that that's cost. Reveal three normal traps from your deck. Uh, your opponent randomly chooses one of those for you to set on the field, and then you shuffle the rest back to your deck. So it's basically pantheism, only it does not go to your hand. So cards like Ash Blossom or Drone Lockbird have very little effect on this. And, uh, and let's say you were up against, I don't know, Goki... For example, like they give you the Ibli, you can just get rid of the Ibli. Or if you're up against Sky Strikers, uh, you definitely want to get rid of their uh, their Link monsters, like Firewall Dragon, especially because you don't want them to result in giving you that OTK combo. And note that this is not target either, so that's why Lilith is such a great card. Um, it's it just really good to like clear up boards. Um, against Spirals, this was re really problematic because you could literally just get rid of their Sleeper and then even if they chain off of it, you'll still get the three traps. So that's why it's like so powerful so moving on we got our terraforming of the deck which is triple copies of arima amazing card because uh you can discard this card to add one layer of darkness from your deck to your hand and also uh if he's on the field he has this effect you can tribute one dark monster draw one card or uh if you tributed a dark monster other than this card to activate this effect you can add one dark monster with 2000 or more defense from your deck to your hand and also, and what's great about that is like you can use that to search out Darkest Diabolus, and Darkest Diabolus' effect will trigger after that's resolved because his ability is a trigger effect, not a quick effect. So that's why it's so good. All right, so that's it for the key cards. Now for the new spicy tech cards that I ran. So I actually found this from a Cybernetic Horizon, and I read through his effect very thoroughly just to make sure I read it correctly. But this monster is pretty good. He acts as a pseudo hand trap. So you can literally special summon this card from your hand if so, by a trigger effect. And he also restores your spells and traps. And I'll get, and this is what I have. I decided to run this guy now. Mana Dragon, Sir Nitron. This card is busted in this deck. If a spell or a trap you control on the field leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect and is now in the graveyard or banished. So that means uh, cards like Cosmic Cyclone, you know, if they decide to banish one of your face downs or whatever. This is where it gets interesting. You can special summon this card from your graveyard or from your hand, depending on whichever one. So he has a similar effect to Darkest Diabolus. But when this card is special summoned this way, you can tar you can set one spell or trap from your banished zone or in your graveyard back to your side of the field. So like this, to like any card that you may have needed later on, this guy brings it right back for you and the fact that he special summons himself. So, but the only problem with this card is that he has to be banished once he leaves the field, if you summon him through this effect. But again, that's actually not too bad. He's got 2200 attack, and the fact that he restores your uh, spell or traps is li literally just an understatement. You can imagine how this card would work well with Waking the Dragon, because like not only do you get to punish your opponent for summoning a monster, but you can bring this guy out at the same time. Now, of course, I'm not running Waking the Dragon in this variant of Lair of Darkness, but I will run it in a separate variant that I'm work currently working on right now, but more on that later. Uh, but yeah, Mana Dragon Zernitron, definitely a great card, a definitely great uh, hand trap, and, and the fact that he's just a level 6 monster, so like you could just tribute one monster as well, just to bring it out. 
and I'll worry, worry about the negative effect, but it's still an amazing card. So that's why I have a lot of high hopes for Mana Dragon Zero Nitron. So moving on, of course, we got two Armageddon Knight. Pretty standard, you know, helps you get your um, Distrudo to the graveyard faster. And also, which by the way, Distrudo. Because uh, it's just to make the uh, Black Rose Dragon board wipe consistent. And he also sends out like other needed uh, dark monsters like Skarm, for example. Just so you can search out, I'm sorry, Lilith in case if you didn't open up with one. So that's why uh, Armageddon Knight's really good and Distrudo is just good because you can pay half your life points if he's in your hand or in your graveyard. Target one level six or lower monster you control and reduces monsters level by that level. So it's also pretty good. And Zero Nitron is a level six, as I mentioned. So like if he's in your hand and Zero Nitron still matches stays on the field, instant level one and just make Black Rose Dragon. All right, so of course going on, we have the one Black, one, Black Wing Steam the Cloak. Oh, nearly butchered that name, I'm sorry. Uh, you mainly just use him for, um, for Link Fodder. Because he can produce a token when he leaves the field. And this part is only a once per duel. But you contribute one monster. If this card is in your graveyard. And special summon this card. But the part where he produces tokens every time he leaves the field. Is not once per duel. And it's not once per turn. So that's why it's really good. So yeah. Blackwing Steam the Cloak. And he's a pretty good tuner. If you can manage to uh, pull off Drago Kytus. You know like. Uh, which I normally. Sometimes I do use him for the fact that he is a tuner. Sometimes. It's not always. But if I do manage to do that. I usually restore my Black my Black Rose Dragon, normal summon this card, Synchro for Drago Kaidas, make my token, and then, you know, start getting to some crazy Link plays, and then just start reviving everything that I need later on. So, but overall, that's, you just mainly use it for the Link fodder. Uh, next up, we got Duke Shade. I didn't run him before, but now I decided to run him because he's basically a Kaiju himself. But you contribute any number of Dark Monsters, special summon this card from your hand, and of course, with Lair of Darkness, you can tribute one of your opponent's monsters. Um, so that's why it's really good, and he gains 500 attack points for every monster that was, um, tributed. And you can target one level 5 or higher dark monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand, if this card was normal or special summoned. So it's a good way to, you know, bring out Darkest Diabolus back, or even your Zern Nitron if he's in your graveyard. Um, but yeah, Duke Shade's really good, so I definitely recommend him at least at one. And of course, standard, you need Tour Guide just to search out special summon your Skarm or your Lilith. And I just learned that I didn't actually know this was an actual thing you could do, but if you special summon Lilith through Tour Guide's effect, you can still perform the tributing cost. I didn't know you could do that. That just negated her effects entirely, but you can activate it, but you can't fully resolve it. So I thought, I was like, oh, okay, so Tour Guide with Lilith still works pretty well, too. So my fault for not ever knowing that. I should have mentioned that in previous videos. So again, that's just my that was my mistake. I didn't know you could do that. But moving, because I knew like if you summon cards like Skarm or even like Sangin with Tour Guide, once they leave the field, you can resolve their graveyard effects, not their field ones. So I was like, oh, okay, so never mind. You can still use the Lilith tributing effect. You just can't search out the traps. But even, overall, that's still really busted. I can see now why Tour Guide's at one, because it's just that good. And of course, as I mentioned, you're running the one Skarm. Once this card hits your graveyard, you can search out um, one level three dark type fiend type monster from your deck to your hand so you'll mainly search out your lilith or your tour guide if you already have a lilith ready so um really excellent cards definitely a standard engine to run all right so moving on to the spells already spells and traps since it's lair darkness obviously you're going to be running three copies of lair turns everything on the field into dark monsters and once per turn if you attribute a monster that would to activate an effect you contribute one dark monster on your opponent's side of the field instead of your own and also you can produce any number of tokens, torment tokens, and this is mandatory by the way. They're all going to be level 3 with 1000 attack and defense as possible on the turns player's field in defense mode. So like if you tribute monsters on your opponent's side of the, on your opponent's turn, like let's say two monsters, he gets the tokens. If you tribute it during your own turn, you get the tokens. It's pretty self-explanatory. But again, it's mandatory so never miss this effect. And it only happens during the end phase of the turn. So as I mentioned, this is the Fang of Critias engine, so you're going to be running three copies of Fang of Critias, uh, because uh, you're going to be able to get your uh, the traps that you're going to be using for Fang of Critias more consistent, consistently. That's why you should run it at three. And for draw, for draw Fodder, you're going to be running three copies of Lure of Darkness. You can also run Trade-In if you prefer whichever one you like better. I just prefer Lure of Darkness just because like, it's a good way to bait out Ash Blossoms. If you get hit with Drone Lockbird, you know, it's like, it really does very little to this deck, because this deck doesn't do that much searching. And when you do do searching, it's mainly going to go directly to your field, like, again, with Lilith. So that's why, like, hand traps like Ash and Joel do very little. The ones that really do 
uh, hurt this deck are going to be the Cypher and Gear Gamma and the um, Ghost Bell. I feel like those are the ones that are really going to hurt you the most. But yeah, Ash and Droll do very little to you, so that's why I don't worry about them as much. And that's why I don't really bother with Called by the Grave in this version of the deck, because it's like, yeah, it's like they don't do much. So like, so what? Uh, moving on for the singles, you got one Foolish Burial. Uh, one Monster Gate, which really comes in handy. Because like, you could literally treat one of your opponent's monsters of Lair's present and then excavate your deck until you find a monster that you can normal summon, so this is basically reasoning. And then, of course, your opponent never has to call a level, which is better. And of course, the one monster reborn. So, and that's it for the spells. So, moving on to the traps, and we got a good bundle of traps. Um, gonna be running three copies of Mirror Force instead of two, as I did originally. Just because, like, you want to be able to get your Mirror Force Dragon out as consistently as possible. Even though you're only running it at one in this deck, I uh, still think, like, Mirror Force is still a great trap because the fact that your opponent never expects it, and not every player is gonna be playing Gokis, obviously. So, like, if you can get multi multiple ones out, bait out any negates, your opponent's just a sitting duck with the second one. So, like, honestly, like, I was able to bait out my opponent against when he was playing Dinosaurs, you know? Like, I went up against True King Dinosaurs just recently, and I was able to bait out the Quatless negate. So that's why I wasn't too worried about it. Um, you're going to be running two copies of Crush Card Virus. Um, you can tribute one monster, dark monster with 1,000 or less attack, and destroy every monster in your opponent's field and in their hand with 1,500 more attack points. And also, this also looks... I believe this lets you look at your opponent's hand. Let me double check. Yeah, look at your opponent's hand, destroy all monsters among them with 1,500 more attack. And this effect... Uh, oh, also, your opponent has the option to destroy up to three more in his deck as well, if he wants to do it that way. But this card does come with a weakness. Your opponent takes no battle damage until the end of the next turn. That's why Doom Virus Dragon is the better option. The fact that it lasts for three turns, and you don't have to worry about the battle damage and negativity about this. So you mainly just use this for Fang of Critias, but if you have, like cards that are really going to be a problem, or if you want to tribute off one of your opponent's tokens, this is the card to do that. Or even Link Kariba, because Link Kariba is a dark type, so you definitely want to get rid of that too. Uh, moving on, we got two copies of Back to the Front, which in my opinion is basically the much better version of Call, or, what is it, Call of the Haunted? Yeah, because this card just lets you uh, target one monster in your graveyard, special summon it in defense mode, so it's really good to bring everything out, and it's searchable through Lilith, so that's why it's so great. Uh, you're going to be running one Ring of Destruction, just, you know, because it's Destruction Dragon, and you want to be able to bring that guy out. He's got a 3,000 defense uh, brick wall right there. <clears throat> you got one Eradicator, which really kills um, Sky Strikers, because if you call spells, they're not going to be able to use spells for nearly three turns. Yeah, they can bring them back, but, you know, destroying their entire hand of spells is just like, yeah, that's just, that's just really busted. And if, just to uh, get rid of back row, you got one Heavy Storm Duster. So that's it for the traps. You know, that's really all you're going to be running. And it's pretty consistent that way, too. So, like, because really the whole point of this deck is, like, constantly tripping your opponent's monsters as much as you can. And just kind of, like, be an annoyance, you know? So moving on to the extra deck, we got one copy of Wee Witch's Apprentice. Again, I'm going to be bumping this up to two once the rest of mine come in the mail. For now, it's just going to be one, and I have another card that's just filling in for now. Uh, just requires two dark monsters. So you can literally use the tokens that you've produced on your next turn uh, just to make this. But all dark monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense points, and also all light monsters lose 400 attack and defense points. So you can imagine this could hurt Trick Stars pretty well all on, all on its own because you're making them far weaker than they already are. However, if you have Lair of Darkness out and they become dark type monsters, that's going to be a bit of a problem. But We Witch's Apprentice is good because once it leaves the field, and I believe it has to go to the graveyard. No, if it's just destroyed by battle card effects, so it doesn't have to actually hit the graveyard. But you can target one dark monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. But it's overall, it's really good. It's a good way to, you know, like, give your monsters a power boost and just weaken some of your other monsters, your other opponent's monsters, if they're, like, especially, like, if they're light attribute. But just be careful, like, you know, if Lair of Darkness is out, they will get that power boost, so just bear that in mind. Uh, moving on, we got one Deco Tugger, mainly because he can negate as well. Because, and his ability tr requires you to tribute one monster if you're going to negate, so that's why Deco Tugger is good, because, like, you can literally trigger off Darkest Diabolus really well. Uh, I no longer run Saryuja anymore, by the way, in this deck, because um, I couldn't find a more consistent way to really bring it out. It was possible to bring it out, it just wasn't consistent enough. So I found that this was a better option. Uh, one Curious Lightsworn Dominion reason I decided to run this is because it just requires three monsters of the same attribute, but different types. 
So it's not picky about like what attribute it's going to be. And you're going to be running a very big variety of um, of dark type monsters. We got Warrior, Armageddon Knight. We got Dragon, Darkest Diabolus, and Zernitron. We got our Fiends, Tour Guide, Lilith, and Arima. You know, you got a, you got plenty of options to make. Uh, Curious really does synergize the deck really well because you can send one card from your deck to the grave. Like you could send a Zernitron if you wanted to. You know, just use its graveyard effect later, or even Darkest Diabolus. And then you can mill your cards, you know, just so you can burn through your deck a little faster, that way you can get to the cards you actually need. Because, like, I don't like running Pot of Desires in this deck. It's really hard to get away with it, so that's why I don't run it. Uh, we got the one Master King Archfiend. Doesn't really do anything for the deck. He just requires two Fiend Monsters to summon, but the fact that he points down to two monsters. And by the way, he's just filling in. I'm actually going to take him off for the Wee Witch's Apprentice and, um, until then. Um, and also, for the last of the Link Monsters, we got two Link Spiders. Which, I'm actually going to bump this down to one and put in an underclock tiger. I just lost one of my copies, so I'm trying to find it right now. But once I get it, it's going to be one Link Spider and one underclock tiger. And that's it for the Links, you know? Again, Saryuji, you could run it if you wanted to, you know? But if you're just looking for, to save money, then there's really no reason, because it's really not consistent enough to make a Saryuji uh, in this variant. But in the next variant, I will run it. Um, it's going to be running Sk Phantom Sky Blaster, actually, and I'll show you, like, a cool two-card combo I've discovered but I gotta get some more cards that I need to make that deck work. So anyway, aside from that, let's go and move on. We got our Synchros, uh, one Black Rose Dragon, one Beals, just cause you know, he can't be destroyed by Battle of Card Effects, so he's really good in this deck, and Drago Kytus. And yes, he is makeable in this deck as well. Um, I did mention that you can just revive your Black Rose Dragon and then summon out your Black Wing Steel Cloak, make this guy, he's a level 10. His requires a non-tuner, dark tuner, which is Black Wing, and a non-tuner, or a dark tuner, which again, Blackwing, I'm sorry. And of course, your non-tuner dragon type, Black Rose. So that's why I thought that was pretty good. Uh, only two XC's monsters. We got number 107, Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon, just because uh, at the start of battle phase, you can detach one XC's material, negate all other face-up card of, all other face-up cards on the field, have their effects negated, and you can attack twice. So I thought that was pretty good. It's a good way to break boards too, like the Goki Nightmare board. I figured that was a pretty good option. Now, I thought that this card was amazing in this deck, but Heretic Sun, um, Overlord. This guy is busted in this deck. Just requires two level eight monsters. But the reason I decided to run is because once per turn, you can detach one Xyz material, tribute any number of monsters from your hand or on your side of the field. So this tributes from the hand. So, and it just requires one, and you can destroy that many number of cards equal to the cards that you tributed. So I was like, oh, that is so good. So like, you can also tribute one of your opponent's monsters too, just to clear up their boards too. And also, uh, this could trigger Darkest Diabolus, obviously. So I thought that was really cool. And I was like, okay, so definitely run this guy. He's definitely a great option as a rank eight, so, and not hard to bring out in the slightest. So that's why I decided to run it. And of course, for the Fang of Critias Fusions, we got the two copies of Doom Virus Dragon. Um, really good card just because his ability lasts for three turns, but unfortunately he's not revivable, so that's why I decided to run it at two. Uh, one Mirror Force Dragon. I figured one was enough just because, like, if, this, if any card you control is a targeted for an attack or by a card effect, you can literally just blow up your opponent's entire board. So that's why I thought one Mirror Force was enough. And of course one Destruction Dragon, just because he's just there for as a brick wall. But he can destroy uh, any card on the field, and if it's a monster, your opponent takes damage equal to that monster's original attack, so that's why I thought it was a pretty good option. Alright, and for the side deck, we got two copies of DD Crow. I decided to bump it down to two now, just because three got too clunky. Uh, every now and then, I do see a random Lair Darkness player as well. So for Mirror Match's sake, uh, Vampire Hunter, but it also comes in handy in certain, against certain other decks like Dark Gokies, just because Vampire Hunter destroys anything that's Dark type. So that's why I figured Vampire Hunter was a good choice. We're still running Dark Arm Dragon, so don't worry, he's not gone for good. He's just there on the side. And it's really not hard to bring him out, even if I decide to main deck him, because it's real easy to just keep three dark type monsters in your graveyard. So that's why I thought Dark Arm Dragon was just good at one. Of course, he's only available at one anyway, but still, you still want to at least be able to run him. And finally, Curry Bandit. Um, I know what you're thinking. Why Curry Bandit? Well, Curry Bandit's ability just at the end phase, if this card was normal summon, you could tribute it. And also, um, look, at, ex look at the top five cards of your deck, well, excavate them rather, send all the excavated you can only keep one excavated spell or trap but that also helps because like if any of them were the darkest diabolus once that resolves you can bring him out and also you got more targets for like back to the front for example so that's why curry bandit i thought was actually a pretty good choice 
But I only keep him on the side. I don't like to main deck him too much. Just because he is a little situational, so that's why I keep it that way. And for those only two spells, we got two copies of uh, enemy controller. And just in case if, you know, like terraforming ever got hit, I don't think it will, but still, you never know. Uh, you want to run Metaverse, just that way you can keep your Lair of Darkness out there consistently. And honestly, it's searchable too, so that's why Metaverse was good. I don't main deck it that much right now because, like, I wanted to be able to get my monsters out more consistently. That's why I decided to side it out. Got the one Grinning Grave, which is pretty good because, like, your opponent can't activate any monster effects on the turn they're destroyed using this card's effect, so that's why Grinning Grave is still a good card. And another good side is Mind Crush. Helps you get rid of, you know, like, hand traps and all that stuff. So, like, if you decide to main deck this at any given point, definitely run Mind Crush every now and then. Because you never know what your opponent's going to be playing. And you need to be able to clear out their hands as fast as you can. So, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you guys again next time.